a fighter pilot flying at 15,000 feet above the frozen Alaskan wilderness, suddenly finds his $200 million F-35 Lightning turning into a flying coffin. The landing gear won't retract. The computer thinks he's still on the ground while he's actually airborne. What happens next breaks every rule in military aviation history. For 50 minutes, this pilot does something that's never been done before in a fighter jet. He holds a conference call with five engineers while fighting for his life in the sky. This is the untold story of the most extraordinary emergency landing attempt in F-35 history. January 28, 2025, Eielson Air Force Base, Alaska. The temperature is 17 degrees below freezing. An F-35A Lightning, tail number 19-5535, takes off for what should be a routine training mission. The pilot has no idea he's about to make aviation history. Within minutes of takeoff, multiple systems start failing in ways that engineers have never seen before. The nose landing gear refuses to retract. Ice begins forming on critical sensors. The aircraft's computer brain starts sending false signals. But here's what makes this story incredible. Instead of immediately ejecting, or attempting an emergency landing, this pilot does something unprecedented. He gets five of America's top aerospace engineers on a live phone call while flying a malfunctioning fighter jet. For nearly an hour, they work together to solve problems that have never occurred in the entire F-35 program. This is the story of innovation, courage, and the incredible capabilities of our Air Force pilots when faced with the impossible. If you're impressed by the skill and dedication of our military pilots, type respect in the comments below. The F-35 Lightning is America's most advanced fighter jet. It costs $80 million to build and represents the cutting edge of military technology. But on this freezing January morning in Alaska, all that technology is about to turn against one brave pilot. As the aircraft climbs through 3,000 feet, the first warning appears. The nose landing gear indicator shows red. The gear is stuck in a partially extended position, creating massive drag and making the aircraft nearly impossible to control. But that's just the beginning. The extreme cold, is causing hydraulic fluid to behave in ways the designers never anticipated. Ice crystals are forming inside the landing gear struts. Critical sensors that tell the aircraft, whether it's on the ground or in the air, start giving false readings. The flight computer, designed to prevent crashes, begins making decisions that actually make the situation more dangerous. Within 10 minutes, the pilot is dealing with what aviation experts call a cascading failure. One problem creates another which creates another. The aircraft is becoming uncontrollable and standard emergency procedures aren't working. Here's where this story becomes truly remarkable. Most fighter pilots in this situation would have two choices, attempt an immediate emergency landing or eject from the aircraft. Both options make sense when your plane is trying to kill you. But this pilot makes a third choice that's never been made before in military aviation. He calls for help from the people who built his aircraft through the air traffic control system at Eielson Air Force Base. A conference call is set up with five Lockheed Martin engineers. Think about this for a moment. A single-seat fighter jet becomes a flying conference room. The engineers on the ground include a senior software specialist, a flight safety expert, and three landing gear system experts. They're scattered across different locations, but connected by one goal, save this pilot and this incredibly expensive aircraft. What makes this even more impressive is the complexity involved. The pilot has to fly the aircraft, communicate with air traffic control, manage multiple system failures, and participate in technical discussions with engineers, all while his fuel supply is slowly running out. For the next 50 minutes, something extraordinary happens in the skies above Alaska. The pilot and engineers work together to understand failures that have never occurred before in the F-35 program. The engineers quickly realize they're dealing with a perfect storm. The extreme cold has caused water contamination in the hydraulic system. This contamination has turned into ice, jamming the landing gear mechanisms. But the real problem is what the aviation world calls weight on wheels sensors. These sensors tell the aircraft's computer whether the plane is on the ground or flying. Because of the ice buildup, the sensors are sending the wrong signals. The computer thinks the aircraft is sitting on the runway when it's actually flying at 15,000 feet. This confusion is causing the flight control system to behave in dangerous ways. The engineers guide the pilot through diagnostic procedures that have never been attempted in flight. They're essentially rewriting the book on F-35 emergency procedures in real time. Every few minutes, they try a different approach. Reset this system. Try that switch combination. Adjust these settings. Meanwhile, the pilot is dealing with an aircraft that wants to do anything except fly straight and level. The partially extended landing gear is creating enormous drag. The ice buildup is affecting control surfaces. The confused computer is fighting the pilot's inputs. But here's what's truly impressive about our Air Force training. Despite all these challenges, 
the pilot remains calm and professional. His communications are clear. His flying is precise. He's managing multiple complex tasks simultaneously while his life hangs in the balance. After 45 minutes of troubleshooting, the engineers make a disturbing discovery. The weight on wheel sensors aren't just giving false readings. They're actively preventing the pilot from controlling the aircraft properly. The computer is essentially fighting the pilot for control. The team realizes they have two options. First, they can try to override the sensor system manually. This has never been done before and could potentially make things worse. Second, they can accept that the aircraft is unfixable and focus on getting the pilot down safely. Here's where American engineering brilliance shine. The team decides to attempt the override procedure. It requires the pilot to access systems that are normally only touched by maintenance crews on the ground. Using verbal instructions from the engineers, the pilot begins working through procedures that aren't in any manual. The tension during these moments must have been incredible. Everyone knows that one wrong move could turn a difficult situation into a fatal one. The pilot has to trust engineers he's never met with his life. The engineers have to provide perfect instructions based on problems they've never seen before. As the fuel gauge approaches critical levels, a decision has to be made. The override procedures haven't fully solved the control problems. The aircraft is still difficult to handle and the landing gear situation hasn't improved. This is where the true character of our military pilot shows. The pilot could continue trying to save the aircraft, but he makes the professional decision to prioritize safety. After 50 minutes of incredible effort, he chooses to eject from the aircraft. But even this decision shows the quality of Air Force training. The ejection is perfectly timed and executed. The pilot activates the Martin Baker ejection seat system and is safely separated from the aircraft. Within seconds, his parachute deploys, and he begins his descent to the frozen Alaskan wilderness below. The aircraft, now unmanned, continues flying briefly before crashing in an unpopulated area within the boundaries of Eielson Air Force Base. The impact creates a massive fireball, completely destroying the $80 million fighter jet. Emergency crews at Eielson Air Force Base had been tracking the entire situation. They were positioned and ready the moment the pilot ejected. Within 60 seconds of his parachute landing, rescue personnel reached him. The pilot's injuries were remarkably minor. Considering what he'd been through, he sustained a compression fracture to his middle spine and some cuts and bruises to his face and neck. He was taken to Bassett Army Hospital in Fairbanks, evaluated and released the same day. Think about this outcome for a moment. A catastrophic aircraft failure in extreme weather conditions, 50 minutes of emergency procedures that had never been attempted before, an ejection over frozen wilderness, and the pilot walks away with minor injuries. This is a testament to the incredible engineering of both the F-35 safety systems and the ejection seat technology. Colonel Paul Townsend, the 354th Fighter Wing Commander, praised both the pilot's professionalism and the base's emergency response procedures. The entire incident, from the initial failure to the pilot's rescue, showcased the best of American military aviation. The official accident investigation, released months later, revealed the full scope of what happened that day. This wasn't just an aircraft malfunction, it was a case study in innovation under pressure. The investigation found that the 50-minute engineering consultation represented a completely new approach to in-flight emergencies. Previous military doctrine emphasized quick decisions and immediate action, but the complexity of modern fighters like the F-35 sometimes requires a different approach. The engineers involved in the conference call were praised for their quick thinking and clear communication. They managed to guide the pilot through procedures that had never been tested in flight conditions. While they couldn't save the aircraft, their efforts gave the pilot the best possible chance of survival. The investigation also led to important changes in F-35 cold weather operations. New procedures were developed to prevent hydraulic system contamination. Training programs were updated to include the lessons learned from this incident. Future F-35 pilots will be better prepared for similar situations. This story shows us something remarkable about American military aviation. When faced with impossible situations, our pilots and engineers don't give up. They innovate, they problem solve, they push the boundaries of what's possible. That 50 minute conference call didn't save the aircraft, but it saved something more important, the life of a skilled Air Force pilot. It also advanced our understanding of how to handle complex emergencies in modern fighter aircraft. The pilot returned to flying duties after his recovery, carrying with him experience that no other F-35 pilot possesses. The engineers continued their work, now with real world emergency experience, that will help them design better aircraft in the future. If this story of American ingenuity and courage impressed you, make sure to like this video 
and subscribe for more incredible stories from our armed forces. These are the untold stories of the men and women who keep America safe in the skies.